one of the categories which is in graphic design, corporate identity and branding, and it's for a very specific DIY product. Sellies, something which I have yet to master, but this is kind of what you guys are all about. So Steve Rishmiller, the yes. creative director, well and also yes. um, uh, marketing manager Marie Papadopoulos, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so Steve, we'll start with you. What, what exactly is it that you did? What do you do? Well, I'm the creative director for the firm, and what we had to do with this product, this product's really specific. Um, Sellies has got a heritage for being DIY. So what we needed to do here, there was a lot of threats within the category, within the trade space, that Sellies was operating at, and it needed to up its game, basically. So what came about was a set of products that was arresting that flow of competitive you know, threats, if you like. So came up with some specific products that would talk to, if you had a requirement in market, this would answer to it. So what we had to do is to make the brand become credible in a trade space. Okay, so it wasn't that the product itself wasn't working, it was that the competitors were in the marketplace, so your Bunnings, your hardware stores, and sellies needed to be noticed in that space in order to, to have a, an advantage, a commercial yeah, advantage. Exactly, exactly. So the products have always been good, and I think that's the thing is we're trading up on Sellies being a heritage brand that is all about products that work. So what had to happen was arresting, again, that threat in a different way and coming up with a set of products that would do so that they didn't have on market before. So it's just tweaking their formulas, basically, to make it more specific to a trade space. Okay. So at Anthem, Marie, maybe you can talk me through what that actually is, what some of those products were, sort of the next level, I suppose, the next steps beyond just noticing that Sellies needed to, you know, create a better space for themselves. Building on what Steve said, um, this, these products were a big deal for Sellies. Um, the formulation was created in-house and as, a, as an organisation we really look to compete globally even though we are an Australian product. Um, we are very credible in the DIY space, however we, that credibility doesn't necessarily extend into the trade space. So we had an existing range called Pro Series, however it wasn't performing and we weren't really making any inroads despite it being in the category for years and this was our relaunch with um, new and superior technology um, to come into the category and really start to compete versus um, a major player which was a dominant player within that space. Mm. Okay, so that means it doesn't matter how good the product is though, unless people can see it and find it, and I suppose wayfinding even yeah. when it comes to the actual retail space, they're not going to know about it, it doesn't matter. So, so what is it then that you had to do working with the client to get that Get it across, I suppose, yeah. For us, what we had to do was to make the brand credible in that trade space. So what we had to do was to play to all of the nuances that made trade specifically pick up product and make it believable. So we knew that for years there was a lot of DIY product from Sellies being used by tradesmen, but when recalled, they would always select another brand or talk about another brand. So all we had to do was to make the product be appealing for the trade so that they believe that it's a product that can trade in that space. So the technology was a big part of it, the formulation was a big part of it, but also just a way finding system on pack that really had rested the category and stood out from the rest of the product was on there. Okay, can you, how, how does that work? I mean, you know, I'm in, I'm in the hardware store, why do I choose that as, o over anything else? I think the first thing is what we did is we arrested as you walk past the category so that it stood out, there was impact to it, but then we spoke about the technology, but more so about the application of this product so that we knew and that they knew that it was a product that would work and primarily over all the competitors were out there that were talking more about a bit more of a trade system, we were more specific about that. Yeah. So we really spoke to technology and made it appealing for them to, to pick up. Yeah. So um, one term we use is niche the majors or niche the big player. So where our competitor really talked more in a different way to the tradie, we really looked at what are some specific needs that are currently not being met, um, developed the product formulation to deliver against that and then with the um, design really brought out that benefit benefit to the tradie, um, so that's, uh, you know, another way of mm. basically saying what. Mm. Yeah. Who, who led who? Obviously Sellies identified that it needed to do something in, in the market in order to, to gain an advantage. So you contacted the agency and said, we don't know what to do, we want to do something, or was it the other way around? Who, who pushed who? 
We had a, um, a big project that preceded this as well. So we had a working relationship with, the, with, uh, with Sally's. So they, from, from all the initial um, conversations that we're having, especially with the project that went beforehand, this was an opportunity that we've always got an on ongoing dialogue with the agency, so, sorry, with the client. So it was something that came about pretty much as a need request. But what about in terms of, I mean, even being innovative, being a bit different, being, you know, somewhat creative or co courageous, I suppose, with, with the ultimate goal? Because you've got, you got to increase sales, that's it. It started with understanding tradies. So there was a big piece of research done around, you know, the current situation, where the gaps in the market are, where the gaps with their, in terms of their needs versus product performance are. So in terms of the actual um, needs and benefits they were um, derived first and then it was a case of, as we typically do, we would work with um, Anthem to look at how we can bring that to life through the, the design and the, um, what, kinda, wh what we amplify, unpack, what we really want to um, focus on, um, help with the name. So we, you know, they have a nice brain, way of brainstorming and coming up with names. So it, it was a, a collaborative effort once we really understood the consumer piece. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that was a really important part is that we had a specific set of requirements. So what we had to do is we had to generate a lot of names, generate what we knew would work in that trade space. So it was very much a collaborative mm. approach. How are the sales? So uh, um, with respect to the, exist the range that was there, um, previously, um, the performance of this range is has superseded um, what was in there before and what was in there for a number of years. Um, it's exceeding our expectations and the growth is um, plus 50% already versus what we had. So okay. we're really, really happy with how it's gone so far. In terms of the research for this rebranding, I mm -hmm. suppose, did you research the technology? How important was the technology uh, in store? What was researched was um, Trady's perceptions of technology and the role it played within their um, life. So Trady's want to be seen as up to date and having um, the latest technology and part of that is also around performance so they want to be able to go in do it once do it right and not have to go back because um, being called back to fix something that hasn't worked costs them time as well as money and also their reputation they're very um, aware of and and want to make sure that their rep reputation is um, intact at all times so that's the role that technology plays for them.